Alright, now comes the time to put everything together and make an awesome workspace that will jumpstart all of our future projects. Now we're gonna model this, or I'm gonna model this, off of a previous version of the template that I use for all my projects and documents and art and things like that. So we're gonna wanna start off with a new document. You can hit Command N or go up to the File, New Document. And pick the artboards, the spacing, the width, the units, everything that we talked about before, that fits you best. So I'm just gonna keep it the way I like it and we'll see we have a blank document. Now the first thing we want to do is make sure that our workspace is the way that we like it. I'm going to get rid of graphic styles because I never use it and I'm going to add glyphs because I do use that. So just just make some final tweaks now that you've uh, played around a little bit and you can go make it legit by hitting new workspace and saving the name of your workspace. All right, now let's think about what elements we want. Over here we've got some commercial free fonts, we've got some symbols, we have logos, and we have other fun elements that we might want to include in our document. Now the elements that you've gathered in the previous video, take a moment and decide which ones you want to keep. We're going to start off by putting some fonts in our document. I'm just going to type out Bavis, which is so small. Okay, and you can hit Command T if you don't see this dialog. I'm going to start off by putting one of my favorite commercial free fonts, Babus. Now, whenever you're getting this ready, or getting your fonts ready, make sure that you put them all the same size, the same kerning, and the same tracking. This will save time later whenever you're dragging out fonts, changing the fonts. You want to make sure that all of the, all of the fonts have the same size, same characteristics. So I just like to use 340. I don't know why. That's just a number that I stuck to. And I like to use optical kerning. Optical, uh, Adobe attempts to set the distance between each characters, the individual kerning, to uh, an equal distance so that it looks better or it looks good to your eyes. Um, or optically it looks equidistant. So it's not 100% perfect, but it'll work for now. Okay, and you can put your fonts over here, you can put them across the bottom, you can put them over here, you can put them wherever you want. Just make sure they're somewhere out of the way, but also accessible. And if you have smaller artboards, you'll have a lot more real estate to work with. I don't have time to type out a million fonts, so I'm just going to cheat real quick, and I'm going to put a bunch of fonts in at once, and I'm going to line them up under here, and that's going to be good. Okay, now it's a good idea to keep everything organized in layers whenever we're doing this. So I'm going to rename this layer fonts. And I'm going to go ahead and get a couple other layers set up. Symbols. And logos. Okay, now it's a good idea to have a couple variations of your logo. You can see down here I have... My simple Fresh Thread Shop logo, but I have a couple different things around the outside of it. If you haven't already done this, it's a good time investment to make logo variations before you finalize your template. And this way, your, your clients, your people, customers, they don't get bored of your logo because it's always slightly different. All right, now let's add some symbols. I'm going to use a font. Oops. I'm going to use a font called WC Sold Out. Okay. All right, and there's three versions of this font. 
which you can get on font space. I'm going to dial down the font size a little bit so I know it'll fit. And then to get all the characters, I'm just going to run my finger across the keyboard until I've got all the letters. That is scientifically the best way to do it. Okay, now I'm going to just option drag. Oh, hit the wrong button. Option drag, so I have three of these because there are three versions of the WC sold out. So I'm just going to get them all. And once I have them all, I'm going to get them nice and close together. And I can do some aligning. Distribute the spacing. Line them up nice and pretty. Okay. Now these are still characters. So what I'm going to do... You know what? Let's adjust the spacing so we can see. Or the tracking. So we can see them a little bit better. Maybe even more. Okay. Oh, I just moved one of them. Okay. Now... Like I said, these are still characters. So we're going to hit either create outlines or go to object expand in order to make these full fledged objects made of paths. Oh shoot, I'm still on fonts. That's not good. So I'm just going to drag these up to the proper layer. Should be symbols. Okay. So, these are still grouped together by the line of type that they're on. So, we're just going to ungroup these objects. And voila, we have a bunch of individual objects for us to use in our artwork. Okay. Now, go ahead and add some other fun things that you found in places such as Wikimedia Commons and things like that. Whoop, I thought I hit Command C. And get your artboard looking the way that you like it. Okay. Another thing worth noting is that you can save swatches such as patterns, uh, special colors, things like that, you can also save these in your template document. So be sure that you have those all ready to go. And take some time to find a lot of fun symbols and things like that. Now, I know this seems very simple, but it's pretty much all that you need to do. One more thing. Uh, if you want to change the size of some of the artboards, like I said, for rendering purposes, um, you can do that here. If not, then just keep it the way that it is. All right. And the last step is to save our wonderful new document by hitting File, Save as Template. Once you have your template saved, you'll be ready to go for all of your future documents. You may want to keep this in a cloud sharing site so that whenever you go to work or some other place like the school that has Max, you can work on your document and you will be able to start off from the base point. Um, another thing is you also want to keep all of the linked documents like if you, ha if you have any images that'll be a linked document. Also all of the font spaces, or font, sorry, font spaces, all of the fonts that you have, um, keep these in a folder and also keep it on the cloud site so that whenever you open it up on a different computer, you can quickly open up all your fonts and have your resources ready so that you can use the fonts that you have listed here. Because otherwise, it'll just be dummy replacement fonts. All right, guys, that's about it. Um, I hope that your template file looks a lot better than this kind of straggly one I've got here. But thank you for watching, thank you for being awesome, and thank you for checking out this tutorial series. Take it easy, guys.